this uh, larger scale version of this model was tested on uh, 100 different objects using a 3D object data set that we curated uh, based on models from Google SketchUp. You can download this if you're interested. Um, and uh, in this case, we actually left out uh, two objects from each of these different categories. So we had like eight bananas that we trained on and two bananas that we held out that were, you know, maybe maybe one of them was green or a different, little different shape. You know, some of these objects had much different shapes like the, uh, the cars and the airplanes were quite different actually. And then we had quite a bit of variation in how we presented these to the, to the network, moving them, sizing them, rotating them different lighting conditions. And so we really were able to control exactly how much variability each object was experienced with. And that was critical for kind of really understanding how robust the model was across this different levels of variability. And these are results, very old results now at this point where we looked at this generalization ability. So how well was the network able to recognize objects from categories that it knew about but had never seen those particular items before, those particular exemplars of that category. And you can see that our model here, this Libra model, uh, performed very similarly to uh, uh, other standard networks at the time. This is all circa 2012, just before the, the big uh, burst of new uh, excitement in these deep learning models. So uh, the, the current results would be probably a lot more dramatically higher for this, net, this kind of test set. But in any case, at that time, our, our biologically based model was doing quite well. And you know this is a 90% accuracy, so a very respectable level of generalization. So in conclusion, we can see that our network is able to, to essentially solve this object recognition problem. Uh, uh, again, this is a quite a challenging data set. Um, one of the things that's characteristic of uh, more realistic data sets that are used in, in current uh, research is that they have complex cluttered backgrounds. And we think and have evidence that we'll see in our next exploration that people actually use uh, attentional mechanisms to filter out those backgrounds. And so we think actually that uh, you want to have those attention mechanisms in place to understand how the brain really recognizes objects. And so that's why we've chosen in this case to look at objects without those backgrounds because uh, we're initially using models that don't have those attentional mechanisms. So it's kind of a different strategy of approach relative to what you see in current machine learning where they just basically say, let's throw everything at it and have huge large scale models and just as a, a little aside here, the, those models end up learning uh, texture representations, texture-based ways of discriminating objects that don't really map on to what, how we think the brain is really recognizing objects. So they don't really recognize shapes um, in the way that you know, we very saliently think you know, this donut is a particular shape, the banana is a particular shape. In fact, these models are relying much more on texture and these kind of repeated patterns. And that's in part because they don't have these attentional mechanisms and they don't have really the same kind of solution to the invariance problem as a result of that that we do. So there's a lot of really interesting uh, uh, issues in uh, more detailed understanding of how object recognition works in the human brain compared to uh, what's happening in these deep learning models.